started up on the YouTube side as well. And uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to Breaking Down Tamawashi's 13 matches in his 13 and 2 U show, which was overwhelmingly dominant from such an old man. Uh, let me just pull up the uh, Sumo database right now. There was a very impressive U show. His second U show, he also got a special prize with it as well. Didn't suffer his first loss until he fought Wakata Kakage, who was at uh, day seven. And then his other loss was against the other Waka brother, Waka Motoharu. So it looks like that uh, Waka family does quite a number to these guys. So let's just test out real quick. All right. You can see the drawings on both the YouTube and the Twitch side. Perfect. And, well, like it says, if you've seen these videos before, or if you've seen these streams before, we're going to be breaking these down one by one. And then, of course, on the Twitch side, we have a little bit of extra stuff. We're going to be watching a bit of Koto Shogiku's Danpatsu Shiki, his uh, retirement ceremony, which we can't really do on the YouTube side because YouTube bots would come and murder my family. So... First things first, uh, I do agree with you, Wakatakakake does need to start a little bit faster. But that's not uh, exactly what we're talking about here. Coming into this tournament, we thought it was going to be more of the status quo. There wasn't really any big storylines coming into it. Of course, there was Tamawashi's uh, streak being held, and the fact that he would move to number three in uh, overall consecutive matches. But... There wasn't really talk about him winning a U show, especially considering, uh, if you want to look up his stats, just at the same time, uh, you know, at the last tournament, from the same exact position, he was 5 and 8 before having to take off, or rather 5 and 7 before having to take off of the Basho due to, uh, you know, COVID. And even before that, 9 and 6, 7 and 8, 8 and 7, all of this from Maegashita 3 and 2. So... You know, the past year, his scores have been 9 and 6, 8 and 7, 7 and 8, 9 and 6, 5 and 7 when he left. So to say that his 13 and 2 was incredibly unexpected is on the money, I think. Like, we can look at who he lost to from Maegashita 3 at the last tournament Sarana Umi, Takakesho, Teruno Fuji, Kotonowaka, Shodai, Whole Shoryu, Ichi Nojo. And then, of course, this tournament around. He only loses to Wakataka Kage and Wakamoto Haru. He beats Sarana Umi. He beats Teruno Fuji. He beats Shodai. He beats Takakesho. Spoiler alert, by the way. And even going further back, at his uh, 9 and 6 Kinboshi, back in uh, two tournaments ago, that was in May, you can see lost to Daisho, lost to Shodai, lost to Kotonowaka, lost to Endo, lost to Takanosho. Takanosho wasn't up this high, but, you know, again, he beat the people that he lost to. And in such overwhelmingly dominant fashion as well, you gotta wonder if those extra couple of days off at the end of the last tournament gave him a little bit of a boost or not, which I think it's a stretch to suggest that much, but it's not too far out of the wheelhouse. So on day one, he's going up against Hol Shoryu. Before this match, it was 3-3 three to three in the head-to-head. -head. We're like, okay, this is going to be a good, solid first match for the both of these guys. You know, Iron Man versus... The nephew, the young versus the old, the veteran versus the upstart, all, all, whatever else you could say about these two, you could say about them. You knew it was going to be a good match. And right now we are going to uh, start breaking it down as soon as I'm done taking a sip of my agua. And let's actually uh, find this match. Oh, uh, we're gonna have to skip ahead here. I didn't set it up properly, but they showed those graphics not too often during the tournament, which was a little uh, upsetting. Takiyasu, uh, someone will probably be breaking down the next week because he was the Jun Yu Show competitor. And of course, if there is demand for it, we can cover anyone else like Uda, Dae Show, whoever else. Here we go. Tamawashi versus Hol Shoryu. Truly. Nothing special to behold here. It's just another good match between good sumo wrestlers, you know? Like Tochi Noshi? No. What's up, Rob and Sam? Thank you for joining on the YouTube side. I hope you enjoy it. 
from over there. Uh, for reference, for the rest of this video, we are going to be drawing anything Tamawashi does in blue and anything his opponent does in red slash pink or magenta or purple or whatever color that is. And thank you for your subscription, Safari Guy. Old enough to drink 21 months, I guess so. <laughs> but thank you so much for your subscription. I do appreciate the support here in the month of Halloween. Me and my uh, fiance, we just watched uh, Nightmare Before Christmas and then a bunch of Scooby-Doo movies. So tomorrow we're going to be decorating Halloween cookies and then going to be watching probably some more Scooby-Doo. Ah. But here we go. Tamawashi versus Whole Shoryu. The way we usually do this is uh, I will speak through the initial match and then we'll go back and break it down. So we go through full speed. You can already see uh, Tamawashi being told to move back a little bit from that white line. Whole Shoryu getting just uh, hands at the Tachi Eye, slapped down almost in the middle of the ring. Nearly gets uh, Tamawashi to walk past him there, but Whole Shoryu taking that stiff arm to the chest is just flung right on out. So, this is going to be kind of a common theme about Tamawashi's matches, is that they are pretty fast. And the last breakdown we did, you know, we talked about Takakesho, and basically just because the matches are fast doesn't mean there isn't a lot to break down and kind of consider what's going through these guys' mind. Reminder, E is frame advance in VLC. Thank you, Molotov. You knew I was going to forget that. <laughs> so, let's see how it starts off. We can see Tamawashi just kind of leans his upper body upwards. So instead of moving forward like most men would, he doesn't do that. He just stands his ground and takes the charge from Hol Shoryu, who we see takes that big first step forward and is trying to make that leverage. Tamawashi takes that charge fully head on and then uses these hands to push Hol Shoryu up and off balance. And we can see that, you know, this hand, oops. This hand goes up to the face, this hand coming like kind of crisscross up to the face, and it's acting both as parries to whole Shoryu's assault with his arms, you can see it getting deflected right there, and also attacks. So this is good defense and offense in the same stroke. And you can see even here, whole Shoryu is overextending himself. This foot is way far back, it's straight out. It's do, like he needs to move this forward and needs to bend that knee a bit so he can get more leverage underneath it. But it's way too far back at this point. Tamawashi knows how to take advantage of bad stances. So now he's on the push forward. You can kind of see this left hand and the right hand here. Get a side of the head. They don't completely misfire and go past the head. He grabbed a hold of the neck and then you can see him throwing the head up and that just you know it rattles whole shoulder here we get to see whole shoulder does take that step back and as whole shoulder takes a step back tamawashi now he's moving forward he's got those shoulders square his feet are pointed in the same direction which is going to be the same thing i say a lot of times in uh, a lot of these videos is you got to make sure you're completely square the hips not so square the shoulders completely square facing whole shoulder the feet are square, but they're also far apart. So he's not like, you know, feet stands to next to each other. They're a little bit off there, but he is pulling that foot forward. And now he's completely square against a whole shoulder who is a little bit skewed. You can kind of see you know, a little bit skewed, a little bit skewed and a little bit skewed. And so what Tamawashi is going to do next here is turn that way. Because Hoshoryu, you know, he's not weak. He is uh, going to be able to turn Tamawashi. But Tamawashi, again, keeps himself square ahead of this attack. And even though he's getting pushed all the way back, he still has a very good stance. Like, look at these legs. This leg bent, bent. He's opening up his stance so he can get more surface area underneath this foot. So he can have a little bit more friction, a little bit more resistance. And using this right foot to drive in like to dig into this and what this is going to do is because he's driving with this right toe into the ground he's going to get pushed he wants to get pushed around this way and then probably let whole shoulder because you can see the way his body is leaning he's turning this way so he can let whole shoulder come back 
But that's not exactly going to go to plan because even though he does get this move and he does get this slap down, whole shoulder you now he has the good stance. Whole shoulder you keeps these legs underneath. Whole shoulder you his center of gravity is above this tree trunk basically, so there's nowhere to push him down. Tamawashi recognizing this really quick is going to let him back up and then attack. And that's, again, something I talk about a lot in these videos is the push and the pull of battle, the flow going back and forth of battle, where you have to recognize that the push isn't going to work anymore, so you have to pull. And when he's resisting the pull, that's when you push. And when he resists the push, that's when you pull. And exactly what was happening right there, whole Shoryu was, you know, bent over, pushing himself up, trying to resist all that force down, so now Tamawashi lets him up. He's flying backwards. Tamawashi is going to keep pushing and basically let that momentum carry himself forward. And here we see Hol Shoryu does turn Tamawashi to the side. This was, I'm not going to say 50 50 because Tamawashi does have a big advantage here, but we can say Tamawashi possibly going a little too ham on this charge took a big step, like from all the way over here to all the way over here. You usually don't want your feet airborne that long, but because of that good initial push, like I said, that pulling down that pushing down into pushing forward that was enough momentum to get whole shoulder you up and out of the ring so like he didn't even need to do this fancy little tippy toe action there but it was it was wise to recognize that he might need that extra second to survive and thus get the win against whole shoulder you so i mean again you can even hear it in the commentary like this is a good match we knew it was coming the initial charge goes to Hoshoryu moving quick as lightning, but Tamawashi keeping Hoshoryu out of reach. Hoshoryu pushing Tamawashi back. Tamawashi having the incredible advantage and just waylaying Hoshoryu. That was a drive-by push, like driving a car right past someone. <laughs> a drive-by push, he calls it. Well, it kind of was. You ran right past him. Day two, after defeating the first Sekiwake, we get to see him against Daisho. The uh, second, the uh, yeah, second of three Sekiwake that he has to fight against. He is uh, was 11 and 9 in this head to head. I know nothing about, and here we go. We skipped right to it. Perfect. Let's just see what it is. And it wasn't what I expected it to be. Like, I thought it was gonna be bread the bushes. Other Let's see. So, Tamawashi, we know again his style strong, stalwart, good defense. But can also put on the offense like we've seen against, uh, you know, Teruno Fuji and a bunch of others. Daesho, basically 100% offense, no defense. So you have to wonder, what is Tamawashi going to do against this? And like I said, in the head-to-head, -head, Tamawashi is, uh, was 11-9. to This was his 12th win in the head-to-head, -head, second win in a row. And, uh, you know, it's just that veteran knowledge being better than... The, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, veteran knowledge being better than the, you know, all out offense of what he's going to be going up against. Excuse so me. veteran, oh. whoops, Once. coming into this match full speed, we see Tamawashi takes that step back, stays strong and square against his opponent, goes Oshizumo, gets the slap to the back of the head and uses that momentum to push Daesho out of the ring. So overall, Another pretty quick match, less than 20 seconds, probably closer to like 10 or 15. But again, you can see right off the Tachi eye, he's going to take a very small step. This tiny little step, boop, because he knows he's going to get stood up. And he's basically doing this to get just a little bit of ground so he'll have a good curve to fight against the Oshizumo that we usually see in these anti-Oshizumo fights. He's going to match Oshi with Oshi, just going, you know, hands to the chest, hands to the chest. And he lands a lot of good blows here. A little bit of a misfire on the uh, the shoulder right here that uh, kind of glanced off of Daesho. But Daesho, you can see he's got that, uh, you know, hail Spock going on right here, like a, an alien. That looks like the jump pad from Banjo-Kazooie now. 
But Tamawashi, he resists the push, and the way he resists all of these push, and the way he resists Oshizumo in general, is basically don't let them at the neck, and then just stay square. That's, uh, Tamawashi is gonna bring this foot around, but basically completely square against his opponent, and letting the blows wash off of him like, uh, like water, basically. So, another misfire up there, you kind of saw it real quick. He misfired, and then pulled it way back again so if i were him or if i were to give advice i would probably say go for more deflections and parries than trying to go for those full-on blows because he missed that and that lets daesho up at the throat right there but you can see daesho slips a little bit his feet kind of come out from under him in that quick second and because of that slip this is where tamawashi knows to take advantage like this is the pivotal moment tamawashi like, as an Oshizumo guy, you don't want to be in this position, basically. He's, like, leaning forward. His feet are not in a good attacking position for what his style wants him to do. His arms are being brought down, basically all because of that slip. And Tamawashi knows that he can finish his match right here. Unfortunately, I don't think he takes good enough advantage but he does start, you know, matching the offense now. He's matching offense for offense, gets, instead of missing this time, he actually gets this nice hand to the side of the head, and that's what's going to start pulling the momentum back for him, because you can see here, again, now he's throwing a forearm straight up into the chin of Daesho, and with that, he's able to throw Daesho off balance, jump back himself. You can see him pulling back already as he gets the slap to the side of the head. And that is something that, uh, you know, you learn. I have very basic knowledge of martial arts in general, but I know in order to get full force in something, you have to throw your whole body into it. And so this strike to the side of the head, it's full bodied because he's bringing the rest of the momentum behind him to go like, wa-bam, wa-bam, like that. To those of you who can't watch uh, my face on the YouTube side, which I should probably see if I can't... Uh, Put myself over there. Can I do that? Nah, it's being used on the... It's being used on the uh, Twitch side, so I can't put it over here. But you see my point, though. Actually, let me uh, widen this up for you a bit more. For blow. He uses that hand to get to the side of Daesho, and it's basically at this point that the match is over. Eyes on the back. The hand is going to come on the butt. Like, at this point, if you're behind your opponent, it's all over. And even though Daesho does recover here, you know, using this left arm to try to get a little bit of momentum back, it's, again, strong push to the face. All of the momentum was going out of the ring because Daesho, you know, leaning over, stumbling forward, gets stood up, turn around, and then out of the ring. And that all is basically born from that first slip right here. Because at this point, it's 50-50. And then, whoop, that slip right there gives Tamawashi the opening. And even in the live uh, commentary, slap to the back of the head gives him the momentum he needs. Damn, I am so smart. <laughs> So day two, you know, he's 2-0, not too far out of the ordinary, you know, it's, he's a very strong Rikshi, he went up against other strong Rikshi, who, you know, just looked a little bit weaker, it's 2-0, not too, uh, not, not not exciting, but, uh, not, you're not celebrating the U-Show just yet, is what I'm trying to get at. Next up is uh, his match against Nish Kigi, which uh, I need a separate YouTube VTuber model for you. No, actually what I need is uh, basically I just need a second camera. But I did come up with something in my head that I could have two different models on the screen at the same time. Let's see, Endo Ono Show, my own commercial, Wakamoto Haru, Takayasi, a little too far. Here we go. Tamawashi Nishikigi. So, me, I'm saying Nishikigi doesn't really deserve to be this high up anyway, and the fact that he's 2-0 is greatly a surprise compared to Tamawashi, who's been around for so long, that the fact that he's 2-0 is not a surprise. 
coming into this match, it was five and zero oh for uh, for Tamawashi. Head to head for Tamawashi. What'll so to I'm very leaning in favor of Tamawashi here. Tamawashi down and ready. <laughs> Slow Tachi Ai, but Tamawashi just in full control. Can't get the initial push out on Nishikigi, but Nishikigi trying to uh, recover from those initial pushes, overcommits, slips, and falls onto his knee. So this is a match that, you know, you would think it's over right here, but let's start from the beginning. <laughs> we don't want to jump around uh, too far ahead now. So right off this uh, initial charge, it's just, e even though that, Tachi, I was like unusually slow. Like, if we want to see that again, it's it's probably because Tamawashi is usually the one on the defense on the Tachi I that like. Oh wow, that actually should have been called back. Nishiki, Nishiki didn't have his right hand down at all. So, I guess uh, taking that false start, taking a mile off of it too, but that's neither here nor there. Tamawashi is slow to the Tachi Ai, again, probably because he's the one that usually sits back. And again, he's even taking that small step forward as opposed to, you know, we've seen whole shoulder Wakataka Kage. They take big right foot forward. This time it's just a little baby step forward. So it takes a little bit longer for them to meet. Also because Nishikigi probably wasn't ready and now immediately has to go on the defensive. And in that, we can kind of see Nishikigi really turtling up here he brings his shoulders down elbows inside probably doing the same thing on the other end too trying to get inside these arms of tamawashi so he can resist the push well enough but unfortunately for him tamawashi gets both hands up to the face and this is where you know against most rikshi i say okay it's over right off the tachi eye tamawashi has great posture here he needs to bring those feet a little further forward because I've seen I've seen smaller men slip from this position but two fantastic hands straight to the face pushing forward and this is where he does bring that big right foot forward pursuing Nishikigi and Nishikigi does resist because oh artifacting there does resist because he gets a perfect parry both hands up high knocking both of Tamawashi's arms up and away that is a beautiful parry from Nishikigi right there. It's unfortunate that he's already so far on the defensive, but even here, great defense again. Feet, great Tawada placement, good curve to resist the push, both hands low and inside so he can parry again. Nishikigi is in not a bad spot here, despite the fact that he is at the edge. And we can kind of see that where... You know, Tamawashi is again getting both big hands to the face, and we've seen this position a lot of times from, you know, Daesho, Takanosho, Abi, where they get the hands up to the face, and then they'll get pushed to the side, slide down, and onto the ground. But that doesn't happen for Tamawashi because he's not the Oshizumo specialist here. I mean, he is performing very good Oshizumo, but... Even though Nishikigi is preparing for a parry like this, you know, he has the hand under the armpit. This other hand, I have to assume, is pushing this shoulder up from Tamawashi so he can try to push Tamawashi to the side. Tamawashi is ready for that, and he actually takes the step back here. We can see he gets the hand to the chest, low and inside of Nishikigi, while maintaining, you know, the stiff arm to the face, keeping Nishikigi off balance and creates some space for himself here so he can then pull Nishikigi back and kind of recharge into him. We can see head right to the shoulder, but Nishikigi, again, this is not a bad defensive position to be in. Foot on the Tawada, big left leg forward. He's actually doing really well in this match, but then as he's brought forward, this is Nishikigi on the push as Tamawashi kind of falls back to recuperate on the defense here. He's Tamawashi is preparing himself for another big push. But Nishikigi, uh, on like right here, you're going to see in just a second that he kind of uh, slips. Like this back right foot is just going to not really stay underneath him. Because we can see, I can't tell if it's uh, Tamawashi initiating the throw here with the like arm wrapped around the head, but this back leg is coming up and that is not safe. 
That's not safe, Mango. And we can see Nishkigi actually has a really good hand on the back here and is probably going for a throw himself, wants to kick up this back foot so he can get more momentum behind it, but then Tamawashi actually takes the hop away. And that's that's definitely not what Nishkigi expected. Just a simple, like... You know, his foot was in the air back here, and then he just pulls it back down, and his other foot, pop, just kind of drags Nishkigi down, which, a very interesting move right there. Nishkigi didn't see it coming, and if we want to see that exact play again, like right here, I think Nishkigi, he's... Okay, he's not initiating a throw. It looks like Nishkigi is trying to charge forward, and then just loses that footing underneath him. So I want to see that one more time at full speed. I'm surprised that wasn't called a false start. I even say in the live, I'm surprised that wasn't called a false start. Yeah, Nishkigi, really good defense here. And then when he tries to go back on the attack, I don't like it when sumo wrestlers do those big hops backwards or sideways. Because now his back right foot is in a is in a bad position and Tamawashi has a lot of room behind him yeah Nishkigi just lost his footing and Tamawashi off of a really good start takes advantage of it good win for him and what would have been a much better match for Nishkigi you know if if it wasn't uh called full speed if it was called Mata we might have seen a, a different match because Nishkigi did not have that right hand down. I don't know why they called that to go on. But it is what it is. And the next match is against Shodai on day four. Did he hit the ball? Let's see. Toby Zarumi Takeyumi. There it was. Shodai Tamawashi. So, like I said, Shodai has actually been beating Tamawashi. Shodai really showed up day one, but then didn't show up any other day of the Basho. So, I expected a bit more from Shodai, especially in this match. It's like an Oklahoma drill. Yeah. Yeah. If you played football, especially offensive or defensive line, then you kind of know how to do sumo. <laughs> Ah, alrighty. So, day four here. Again, I think it could go either way. Tamawashi is looking pretty good. Shodai does have Tamawashi's number in recent times, and Shodai, he has a lot to lose here. So, I would have thought Shodai would show up. You can't fault me for that. You can't fault me for that. But we're going to quickly see what happens. Tamawashi and Shodai. Another slow charge forward for Tamawashi and just complete dominance. Big right hand, big left hand, and Shodai didn't stand a chance. And this time, uh, it looks like Shodai does get both hands down before the Tachi Ai this time. But uh, again, we saw that slow lean in into that Tachi Ai. He leaned forward very slowly took a small step forward and then once he got the momentum now he's taking those big drives forward really driving the knees pumping those legs hands in a perfect spot up on the chest shodai his hand like that's not a good position that's not a an amazing position but that is a good position if you can deflect the attack and escape to the side over here which is kind of what shodai does try to do at full speed but because tamawashi you know, he's smarter than that. He keeps his body as square as it can be. You know, those shoulders not as square as they want to be, but that's because he's leading with this right shoulder straight to the face. So this left one has to be back so he can follow up again at a moment's notice. And then, of course, his feet need to catch up with the hips as Shodai is retreating. So here again, just straight Power from Tamawashi, Shodai on the retreat, and we can even see Tamawashi nearly gets a bit of ahead of himself. Like we can't see perfectly from this angle, but shoulder square, hips not so square, the feet are lagging behind him. Like if we were to draw this out like this, it would look kind of like you know that, where his feet are very far behind where his hips and his shoulders are. So. You know, he's going for an all or nothing attack here. He is charging forward and pushing forward as hard as he can. And is Mark lands. 
He gets this big right hand to Shodai's face. Shodai can't do anything about it. Shoulder square, hip square, feet catching up to him. And Shodai just pushed right on out. This is the second match, though, where uh, Tamawashi w could have been sidestepped at the edge. The first match against Hoshoryu and this match here against Shodai. If Shodai gets a little bit better footing, if that toe isn't on top of the Tawada and is instead in front of it, then maybe Shodai survives for a bit longer and slaps Tamawashi off to the side and out of the ring. But, uh, you know, Tamawashi, the real bull here, looking pretty good on these charges. So, you know, he's 4-0, Shodai 1-3. 4-0 going into his match against the Yokozuna, who he has been absolutely dominant against in, you know, the past couple of tournaments. Like, it has been completely one-sided when it comes to Tamawashi versus Teruno Fuji, and usually it's kind of the same thing I've been describing. Tamawashi will get that lean in, that big right hand to the face and neck, and then just charge straight through Teruno Fuji, which, making him out to sound like an Oshizumo specialist, which... He doesn't do the Oshizumo like Daisho and uh, Abi does, but, I mean, he does have strong Oshizumo. A little bit more balanced than uh, those other two because he knows how to have a defense, but uh, here we go, full speed. Tamawashi, big right hand, follows up with big left hand, both hands now getting the grip under the arm as he keeps one of those hands up at the face. And he uses those hands at the face to drive forward, get the win, and, you know, get his, what, fourth Keen Boshi in five tournaments or some crazy number? So, again, coming into this match, we were leaning more towards Tamawashi here. Might have been 50-50, probably leaning towards Tamawashi. No matter what, you you wouldn't be wrong in predicting either one to win. Teruno Fuji, oh, he lost one, he looks weak. And, you know, I'm making fun of the people that are saying he's going to pull out of the tournament. And egg on my face, he does, but we're not talking about Tenno Fuji right now. We're talking about uh, Tamawashi. This 5 0, not unexpected, but I expected like maybe 3 2 instead of 5 0. But that's a, that's a different story. So, right off the Tachi Eye here, again, Tenno Fuji, kind of more defensive. He usually takes, and this is something we've covered with him before, he usually takes, you know, Big foot forward and goes, you know, up high to try to grab and scoop and get on the defense. Tamawashi, again, he's going to get that slow lean in, as we see in just a second. Takes just two small steps forward. Again, not that huge step forward that Tenno Fuji is trying to do. Just like, you know, changing the angle a bit like, eh. Like that. <laughs> Just a tiny step forward to get that lean in. And that lean is what's going to help, you know, assist this big hand to the face. Because he's got all this force leaning forward. And to push all of that upwards into the face, that's, you know, going to give him the momentum he needs. And so immediately Teruno Fuji can't get a grip anywhere. And that big right hand to the neck, we know that's uh, Teruno Fuji's weakness is, you know, just slap his trachea a little bit. Maybe he'll get staggered. And he actually does. He actually uh, pulls back on this right arm and follows up with the left. And that's, you know, something that a lot of Oshizumo men do is pull back, push, pull back, push. Pull back, push, you know, just alternating your strikes, obviously. This is just a little bit slower than, again, someone like Abi or Daisho. But the fact that these calculated hits are landing right at the neck, which is exactly where they need to go in order to move Teruno Fuji, that is 100% Tamawashi's, you know, veteran knowledge coming into play here. He is smart. He is not weak at all. He takes his time when he needs to. And, you know, here at Tenno Fuji, he knows Tamawashi. He's been in this matchup a bunch of times in the past year. Tries to deflect it and parry it by getting that right hand up inside. And even though he does, Tamawashi immediately follows up. You know, you saw it was lightning fast. He hits the face with the right and then follows up with both hands up on the neck. And Tenno Fuji making a really funny face right here. Look at this. Then again, I guess anybody would if you're 
just holding their face like I do with my dog. Like, rah, 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 rah. But big push to the face right there. This is where danger might start coming in again because we've seen Teru, uh, Tamawashi. When he's on a big push forward, he tends to get knocked to the side like we saw against Shodai and against Whole Shoryu. And here we already see, uh-oh, danger, Will Robinson. Right hand trying to deflect Tamawashi to the side. And how does Tamawashi respond to this? He takes a step back so he can get a little bit of space away. We saw him take, you know, this step back. And then he reattacks underneath that armpit. So now he's not going to get knocked off balance. Now he's got a foothold underneath Teteno Fuji. And on the pull right here, Teteno Fuji nearly stumbles forward. Oh, that was weird. Teteno Fuji nearly stumbled forward. Let's just go back to that point because uh, my VLC froze. Yeah, Teteno Fuji stumbling, trying to catch himself with those legs. Good stance. Gets turned around by Tamawashi, who just drives, like, he's jumping up into the chest now. He's pushing up. He's making himself really stiff while Teteno Fuji is trying to stop him with, you know, knees bent, feet not on the floor, though. That foot is not touching ground. That means he's not able to stop anything right here because Tamawashi is kind of prop. I was going to say popping and propping at the same time, which is just propping. But Tamawashi propping him up underneath this right uh, left shoulder. That's what's kind of pulling Teteno Fuji up off the ground over here. So Tamawashi can keep pushing. And then, of course, the hand to the neck for a good measure. And it's at this point that Tamawashi pushes straight forward. There's no way he's getting deflected to the side. Another Kinboshi for Tamawashi. And this is kind of where we start talking about how Tamawashi is the Yusho race. He's undefeated, 5-0 after this first trimester. He is uh, looking pretty dang good. And, you know, just looking at it at this point, it was Tamawashi, Hokuto Fuji, and Oho, to which I'm saying, you know, Takakesho, Whole Shoryu, Takayasu, they're all still at four wins. So this, this Yusho race, you know, it, uh... It's going to get close. That's what I was saying. That's what I was thinking. That's kind of what I was hoping, too. But uh, we're going to quickly see that that is not going to be the case because Takakesho, hot on the heels of Tamawashi, faces him this night. And we're going to see classic Oshizumo versus classic Oshizumo. Takakesho, Battle Hamster versus Tamawashi, Iron Man. <clears throat> Let me take another quick sip. At this point, uh, Takakesho was 12 to 6 in the head to head. Now it's uh, 12 to 7, of course. But we'll take a quick look as to how it happens here. Or will it be the undefeated veteran? Tamawashi, another slow charge forward, and Takakesho just slips underneath him. Not much of a match to talk about here. But we can see the consistency in Tamawashi's charges. Takakesho, kind of far back. A little bit further back than I usually see him. He's not on that white line. But Tamawashi, just again, little baby steps forward. You know, takes that little step and step just to get a little bit of a, you know, lean down and actually being able to get higher. You can see that right hand is going to go for the slap down here. There they go. But, of course, not really slapping down Takakesho. Takakesho does stand up and resist it. And it's at this point that we can kind of see uh, Tamawashi is weirdly off balance here. Like, not everything is square. And you have to wonder what's going to be happening next is he's going to start attacking from the side. Like he pulled that right shoulder back so he could swing it around and attack into uh, into Sakakesha like this. Uses this big left arm to catch him right behind the head. And then from there just pulls him down. So really quick move. 
really like at first I thought Takakesha slipped, but that was a Tamawashi attack right there. And we're gonna see that happen again at full speed. Tamawashi pulls back that right arm so he can swing around, catch him, and then pull him down. There they go. Swings that right arm, catches him behind the head, pulls him down. Takakesho usually doing that, you know, lean down into the chest move where he will push you back with his head and his arms. Tamawashi counters it perfectly because right here as, you know, Takakesho dives for the chest, Tamawashi is getting to the side, which is going to, you know, Takakesho is not going to hit you head on. He's going to slip down your chest and then he's just going to get pulled down. So... Again, very smart veteran move from Tamawashi, 6-0, and oh, and, you know, he's looking incredible right now. A lot of very fast matches, too, and that is going to keep your stamina up, because like uh, Takeyasu, he used to have those long, drawn-out, like, two, three-minute-long Yotsuzumo battles with, uh, with Takeda Fuji, who was very happy to take those battles, but these matches are very fast. Yeah, could I? It's like I said, I thought he slipped, but uh, that big r left hand around the back of the head whop, pulls him down. You could, I, I, you know, he does slip a little bit, but that's because of the pull down. <laughs> like if uh, Takakesho kind of saw this coming, you can see his uh, right foot is being like kicked up here. If he pulled that right foot forward and got it underneath him, then that slap down doesn't do anything but that's not Takakesho's style I was like a, a henka on that second charge kind of <laughs> there's the first one there's the second one but yeah you know really good match from Tamawashi next up is uh gonna be his match against Waka Takakage where again we're kind of talking about like hey Tamawashi he's looking big he's in the lead Okto Fuji won his match, so now Tamawashi needs to win in order to match the uh, the Maegashira man, which they're both Maegashira man, but you know what I'm talking about. Tamawashi versus Waka Takakage. Tamawashi getting down first. Tamawashi with that usual strong push forward, but Waka Taka resists it and tosses him to the side. And that was the thing we talked about day one and day four against uh, Hol Shoryu and Shodai. When he goes a little too strong on the push, it's easy for him to get deflected. And right there, Wakataka Kaga with a very nice deflection on the attack. We could watch a full speed again. Wakataka full defense here, trying to get under the arms, getting a favorable position, and then throwing Tamawashi to the side. Tamawashi getting down first. We can see Tamawashi again. That usual small step forward he does so he can lean forward use all this force and start pushing he's gonna try to extend the arms so he can get this better push and wakataka kage he's got that big right foot back big right foot he's got all that friction pushing up against his foot he's trying to drive forward and stop this charge by digging this heel into the ground but it's just not working as well as he would like but he does resist the push enough to be able to get his arms underneath. And right here, Tamawashi, his grip does slip a little bit, and that's why he's going to pull back the arm and then attack again at the throat. And he knows, recognizes that he's not going to be able to finish off Wakataka Kage with simple thrusts to the face. And that's why he opts into this grab under the arm. Tamawashi was the one who initiated this. So Tamawashi getting this underarm grab gets into this Yotsu match now with Wakataka Kage, who is going to use this momentum here as Tamawashi pushing forward again. He's driving forward, and you can see, you know, his eyes are looking this way. His foot is going to swing around this way. His hips are going to swing around this way. And Wakataka Kage is going to use that momentum to turn him. Like, look at that foot from Wakataka Kage. It was facing this way, and then immediately turns it so whoop, turns that and his entire leg 
to put all that force on that, uh, what's the word, that pivot, and just completely turns Tamawashi around. And Tamawashi, at this point, he needs to try to use this underarm to get a good throw, like tip Wakataka Kage over, but at this point, it's a little too late because Wakataka Kage got his move, and, uh, well, he's got that strong left outside right on the back tamawashi off of his feet and this was more talking about uh how wakataka kage won than it was tamawashi losing but uh this was a very good match silver versus blue right at the edge again tamawashi in control seemingly up until that last moment but it's going for this hand on the inside again that relinquishes that full control he had up in the face of Wakataka Kage, because when he had both hands on the neck, you know, you could wrench the neck, you could shake him back and forth like a baby or however you want to shake a human being. But when he opts into getting this arm underneath the chest, this also gives Wakataka Kage agency because now Wakataka Kage has that left arm outside, which allows him to get that push later on. Because where Tamawashi needed to use this to uh, lift and, you know, pull, throw Wakataka Kage himself, Wakataka Kage uses that to get the push on the outside and at full speed. Great match from Wakataka Kage right there. And again, if that happened day one, day four against Hoshoryu and Shodai, we're talking about a completely different tournament for Tamawashi here. I'm not saying he got lucky, but I am saying he does take these coin flips where, you know, you win some, you lose some, and this time he lost it. Just look at that pivot from Wakatak Kage. Big throw really good. What a win. Next up, he's fighting against another veteran that uh, he lost to at the previous tournament in Sarano Umi. Let's see, a little later in the day. Tamawashi Sarano Umi. We get to see these graphics in the air again. He spent the last year up in this position. And didn't even get close to double digits. So this time around, he's really performing well. Gotta wonder if he was uh, eating his Wheaties or if he just really likes the uh, the month of September. Just complete dominance off the charge from Tamawashi there. Got the head under the chin of Sarano Umi. And not really too much to analyze about this match. The Basho is over. We're breaking down Tamawashi's 13 wins. Because, spoiler alert, he won the Basho. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, uh, again, Sarano Umi beat him at the last tournament. Tamawashi actually currently has a 5-10 and head-to-head -head against Sarano Umi, so it was 4-10 to at this point. But, uh, you know, Tamawashi, he woke up, he was mad about his loss yesterday, and we're going to see... Boom. Like, head-to-the-nose... Sarano Umi just kind of stunned, pushed back immediately, and again, there's not too much to break down about this, except for, you know, just this placement at the initial charge. And then Sarano Umi, you know, just full face to the crown. You, that, that hurts, dude. Like, that is skull to the nose, head to the teeth. This guy just gets... Popped right up, and you know I've been there. I, I can't say I've you know gone against a sumo wrestler, but I played football, and you know sometimes the guy across from me on the line just gets perfectly underneath you and pops you right up, and that's kind of what happened right here. Just pop. Sadano Umi already on the huge back foot. Tamawashi pursuing with these small steps, and that's what I love to see from a sumo wrestler is not taking these huge strides where they're. They have a lot of time on one foot. But all these little baby steps down here that helps him drive forward. 
and especially pumping the knees and you know right here as i say it he takes that big step right there but that's because sarana umi leapt backwards and that gave tamawashi all the room he needed to push forward keeping that hand up to the face just really again not too much to talk about here winning it right off the tachi eye and that could have been a match again where uh if Sarana Umi didn't get completely obliterated on the Tachi Eye, he can push Tamawashi to the side. But Tamawashi stays centered, firm, square against his opponent here. And boom. It's just keeping your body square against your opponent. Wish we could see a generation of sumo like Chiyono Fuji. I think we're going to get to that point in maybe 5 or 10 years. Because we do have a lot of young up-and-comers on the rise. Hoshoryu, Wakataka Kage, Koto Nawaka, Koto Shoho, Oho, Atami Fuji, Nishiki Fuji even. I'm on the Nishiki Fuji train. Tobi Zaru is a little bit older. Uh, I have hope for Takanosho. And those are just guys in the top two divisions. That's not even talking about like uh, the rookies in the second division. Like Gonoyama, uh, Toti Musashi, Hokuseiho. You know, we have a lot to look forward to in the next like five years of sumo. So I think we will get to that point where we see another just great couple of uh, Yokozuna ruling the top. Will Tamawashi be one of them? I wouldn't bet on it. Let's see. Up next is going to be his match against Meisei. You know, there were some games also that had two young men trying to make their way up. Let's see. Meisei was Maegashita 2 here. There we go. Tamawashi Meisei. The real man. What happened to Asanayama? Uh, Asanayama got suspended from Sumo for a year because he uh, went out to host clubs during uh, COVID. So he was suspended for a year and is currently back in the third division. Uh, he went 6-1 and one from Makushida 15, so he will not be rejoining the Judeo ranks. Enho is in that second division getting losing records, so uh, I think people are off of the Enho hype train for now. People are still hoping he comes back, but uh, I'm, I'm kind of off that hype train as well. You're all in on Tochi Noshin. <laughs> it's dangerous to get between any sumo wrestler and the rice. <laughs> If you uh, want to win your sumo match, just imagine there's rice on the other side of the dojo. Of course. But yeah, coming up into this match, it's against Meisei, who was struggling on the Basho. Again, I expected better from him. He is on the younger side. He is, uh, you know, he is inconsistent. That's also true, Angel. A lot of people believe that uh, Asanoyama was punished extra because he lied and tried to you know, organize the lie with the person he went out with. Whereas someone like Ryuden and Abi, they were like, yeah, I went out. You caught me. Okay. Six months suspension. But for Asanoyama, he lied about it. He's like, no, I didn't go out. I I, I didn't do that. And then the, the guy he went out with, he's like, Hey, tell people that we didn't go out. Tell, tell them we didn't go out. And then, you know, a little bit later, he's like, yeah, all right. I went out. You caught me. And so uh, some people believe that it's because he was an Ozeki that they needed to uh, punish him harder. Some people say that it was because he lied. I choose to believe that it's because he lied and because he's Ozeki that uh, he was punished as harshly as he was. So uh, I think he got what he deserved, basically. And uh, I think it's a message to a lot of the other Rikshi as well that like, it doesn't matter if you're like the golden boy or if you are, you know, the hope for next Yokozuna. Like, don't fuck around, and you won't find out. <laughs> just just don't do it. But anyway, this next match, Tamawashi versus Meisei. We're going to watch it at full speed here. Tamawashi, a little bit even at the Tachi Eye, but again, gets that right arm under the uh, arm of Meisei, and unlike against... Uh, Sekiwake Wakataka Kage, it actually works out this time where Tamawashi pushes through Meisei and pushes him out of the ring. Yep, they called it there. So, again, full speed. We see it is a bit even, but Tamawashi got a big slap to the face and then just pursued Meisei across the ring as Meisei tried to go 
on the retreat, but Tamawashi, keeping that right hand inside, was able to keep up with him and charge right through him. Tamawashi. So yeah, right here we see even head-to-head -head between them, Meisei getting that big foot forward, whereas Tamawashi opts for, you know, those little steps that he likes to go for and then lean in. But here he gets uh, popped up by Meisei. They're both going to go up at each other. And, you know, it's a 50-50 Tachi eye. They're both getting handsy here. And when it's hands on hands, it's just a matter of who lands the better blow. And what Tamawashi does here is uh, he's going to be the first to lean his entire body in, which is dangerous because if Meisei is able to, you know, get this left hand outside and get a deflection, then Tamawashi just goes flying. But instead, what happens here is that Tamawashi actually lands squarely and Meisei deflects him back up so that he's square again. Meisei actually popped him back up this way. And so now Tamawashi again squaring up against his opponent you know not perfectly these shoulders are a bit off but you know it's because he's gonna swing them forward again for more attacks pull it back swing it forward so shoulders a bit more forgiving but the hips they are square on his opponent this is where again Meisei tries to deflect him but here as Meisei deflects him to the side and gets the grip around the arm you could argue that Tamawashi is using this right inside so he doesn't just go tumbling out of the ring. So Tamawashi catching himself here and hopping forward. You see that a lot where they like, you know, his feet were back here hopping forward. So now his feet are underneath his center of gravity, which is, you know, somewhere around right here because his knees, his butt sticking out over here. His big old head is right there. Hopping forward so he can catch himself, and now he's going to be on the pursuit as Meisei is going for the pull. And because Meisei is on the pull, on the retreat here, it gives Tamawashi a way to push forward. As you can see, right hand is straight to the chest. Meisei, ugh, it looks like he almost rolls his ankle right here, like, ugh. But, uh, it's at this moment that Tamawashi kind of wins the match, whereas, like, a half a second earlier, he almost lost it. Because right here, just running right through Meisei. Nearly got those toesies on the sand out there. Just nearly, nearly got that right there. But, uh, you know, it is complete and total dominance for Tamawashi. Even if those toes did touch, that's a dead body right there. That's complete dead body rule. <laughs> you can't convince me otherwise. But the pivotal moment again is going to be right here. Meisei attempting the pull. Tamawashi, big hop forward to get those feet underneath him to catch himself. Boom. And because that happens, Meisei does not get the pull, does not get the slap down. So another good win for Tamawashi as he goes to 8-1. and one, And at this point in the tournament, it's... Tamawashi and Hokuto Fuji in that race. You know, Tamawashi still one win behind as we come into uh, day 10 of the tournament. I get to see my ugly mug as a. Uh, before I left for a date. Do the people who sit in the very front row want a sumo to fall on them? Probably. <laughs> I, I made the joke once before that, uh. If I ever got front row seat tickets, I would make the joke like, Oh, we caught one. Can we keep him? Let's see. This next match is against Mitaki Amita. This was a really good match here, too. Kiribayama, Tobizaru. This match actually is in my uh, top 10 matches, I think. If you want to go and take a look at that, my top 10 matches of the uh, Akibasho, that'll be coming out on Wednesday. Because we already had the top 10 matches of the uh, lower divisions of the Aki Basho. Ah, thank you so much for the uh, resubscription Kieran Tricks at Tier 3. You know how much sumo tickets go for? Uh, the bleachers, like up in the second floor, they're okay seats. They go for like $20 to $50, depending. Uh, then you have the box seats that are, th I was told, $350 per box. They seat four people. 
And then, of course, the floor seats, which are in the thousands of dollars, I think. So you'd have to translate that to yen or vice versa. But uh, sumo tickets are not cheap unless you get the cheap seats. Yes, thank you for your tier three subscription, Kieran Tricks. Hope you're having a good day. That is three tiers of subs for 27 months. If you can enjoy a stadium seat at a football game, you can definitely enjoy a cheap seat for sumo. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, it doesn't look like there's a bad seat in the house for sumo. You might be uncomfortable in those you know, plastic lawn chairs all the way up with your back to the wall. Hey, I'd pay $1,000 to have the chance to catch Uda. I want to touch his pink belt. Yeah, they're pretty expensive. Somewhere around there, probably. Are you going to start vacuuming? Oh, okay. Just let me know. Oh, okay. Alright, so this match, Tamawashi, Mitakeyumi. Mitakeyumi desperately needs wins. Tamawashi, it's 27 to 4 in favor of Mitakeyumi. How the hell does Tamawashi win this match? Well, the wall. Let's find out. Tamawashi gets the usual lean forward, and he was the one on the retreat, but he also gets that slap down. That's a, a position you don't usually see Tamawashi in, is on the losing end of the Tachi eye here. And Mitakeyumi had the better charge, but Tamawashi taking control defensively immediately to go nine and one. So let's break it down bit by bit here. Tamawashi, again, baby step forward, you know, just, boop. just getting that momentum he needs. But Mitakeyumi, you know, we saw it the other day where Saranoumi popped up or got popped up by Tamawashi. This time, Mitakeyumi is a bit lower. It's not head to the head, but, uh, or head to the face rather, but it's head to the shoulder. And that's going to pop up Tamawashi here. Tamawashi gets popped up and immediately recognizes that he is not favorable in this charge. Mitakeyumi has the better footing forward. He's got that big, strong, you know, force forward, and he's going to follow it up with the, you know, this big foot back here. I got a jumble of lines over here now. But Tamawashi still gets that big right hand to the face over here and recognizes that, uh, you know, now he's got to be on the defense. So what does he do? Immediately pulls. Just very quick. He gets this right hand to the back of the head and pulls Mitakeyumi down. And then, you know, retreats around the edge of the ring so he can try to get that slap down. And you can see him going. Like, Mitakeyumi stumbling and bumbling forward. Tamawashi, his footing is not bad here. Like, this is a good stance. Foot back on the Tawada. You know, back pretty even. And if you can hear the vacuuming, I'm sorry about that, but uh, you know, they have to clean up after their dog. Uh, but yeah, Tamawashi not in a bad defensive stance here, but it is scary because he's going up against one of the strongest sumo wrestlers in Mitakeyumi. But what you're going to see here, as well as this uh, left hand to the back that is going for that slap down, he's going to pull this right arm up and around and pull. Mitakeyumi back. Going high. So he gets that right hand underneath the armpit, really throws Mitakeyumi off balance. Like, he can't see it from here, but Mitakeyumi, his shoulders gotta be, like, twisted up like that. He's being stood up. His feet, again, still not in a bad position, but because those shoulders are really whack, Tamawashi using this force... Oh, that's the wrong color. Using this force underneath that armpit, and then... You know, pushing on one side, pulling on the other. It's perfectly balanced in this attack right here. Pulling up that right arm, pushing down this head. And then the footwork, the feet, still inbounds. Really good defense from Tamawashi on this push to get that ninth win. And again, it's not something... You would have expected. Mitakeyumi was in, uh, I wouldn't say full control on that Tachi Ai, but he did win the Tachi Ai into giving up 
no more more defense from Tamawashi there to get that win basically because again we can watch it at full speed Tamawashi even though he loses the Tachi Ai, he's in control he's in full control on this retreat and this pullback Mitakeumi couldn't do anything with that left arm because it was under Tamawashi's control Mitakeumi was on the push forward but he was also getting pulled back by Tamawashi just really really good sumo from Tamawashi as we get into the next match against that front runner Okuto Fuji on day 11. I could do that. That would be a long video. Eiko Adel. Actually, that's a good idea for a video. If I uh, run out of ideas for anything else, I can do the uh, Chiyono Fuji win streak breakdown. All of his matches. That'd be pretty dope, actually. If I ever have like four hours to burn or for sumo content after it's already been released and it's like, well, now I want that. But yes, coming into this one, Tamawashi and Hokuto Fuji. Again, they're both nine and one coming into today. They are far and away the front runners of this tournament. Hokuto Fuji coming off of a loss so that now if Tamawashi wins, he is the sole possessor of first place. And it would remain that way until the end of the tournament. So Hokuto Fuji, I call him the human cannonball because he has some of the most powerful Tachi eyes. And you can see he's even losing that hairline because he uses that forehead in his offense so much. Tamawashi, I think he's better suited for the defense on this Tachi Ai. He was 9-7 to seven in the head-to-head -head before this match. 10-7 to seven now. But Tamawashi coming into this one? <clears throat> Pardon me. I was leaning towards Tamawashi in this one, I think. Thank you. So immediately off the Tachi Ai, Tamawashi gets those big hands to the face as Hokuto Fuji opts to try to grip the belt. And it's just those big hands that get the win. Big right hand does not leave that face until Hokuto Fuji stumbles forward, and that stumble forward gives Tamawashi the push he needs. Thank you. So bam, right here. Tamawashi, again, you know, baby step forward. We're going to stop talking about that. Gets that lean, but he deliberately puts his head to the side of Hokuto Fuji. Because Hokuto Fuji, big foot forward, he goes to that left side. Tamawashi kind of dodges the meat and potatoes of this charge that is Hokuto Fuji's head. And Hokuto Fuji actually gets a really strong grip on the belt here. Tamawashi deflects it, or rather uh, kind of takes it in as best as he can. Absorbs the Tachi Ai like a sponge, and then uses that to get those hands to the face immediately. He kind of went to the side just enough that he could catch... Hokuto Fuji with this big right hand and then just would not let him go. He also has that left hand inside on the face too, but you can't really see that from this angle. And he's just going to start manhandling uh, Hokuto Fuji right here. Hokuto Fuji, a huge grip on the belt on the left, but there's not much he can really do with this. He's not attacking with that right hand. And his stance is one that is, you know, like his legs look like a bullfrog. Jeez, he's back. He's defensive. This is a defensive stance because Tamawashi has hands to the face and he's the one pushing Hokuto Fuji back. So having that grip on the belt for Hokuto Fuji, it doesn't matter. That grip straight does not matter. And here, Hokuto Fuji loses the grip. It's slipping onto the Sagari, which does keep him attached to Tamawashi, but a grip on the Sagati is as good as no grip at all at some points. Because now Tamawashi pushes Hokuto Fuji far enough away that he stumbles forward in trying to maintain that momentum. You know, how I talk about uh, Hokuto Fuji was resisting the push so hard. Like if I could draw it out here. He was leaning so far forward that when it let go, he like, whoa, stumbled forward. And that's exactly what's happening here. He stumbles forward because everything that he was pushing against is suddenly gone. And now he needs to overcorrect by standing back up. 
but Tamawashi is already there to take advantage of him wanting to stand back up, pull himself back up, because Tamawashi is going to, okay, you want to stand up? I'll help you out. Push right back up and out of the ring. Very simple, quick, effective move. You keep that force on the face and then take it away when they least expect it. So they stumble forward like that. And then you take advantage of that. It's as simple as that. <laughs> Oshidashi. Fantastic win as he uh, defeats Hokuto Fuji there. People that think sumo is fit. Yeah, I know. Some people still think that there's a lot of match fixing. Uh, next up, we have his match against the other Waka brother, Waka Motoharu. This is the first time these two ever meet in the ring, and I actually skipped to it perfectly. Very nice. I'm just that good. I'm talented. There's a lot of match fixing. Clearly, Tochi Noshin would not be losing his matches. He's just the most powerful. <laughs> Here we go. Tamawashi, Wakamoto Haru. Let's be real. I did not think Wakamoto Haru stood a chance in this match. But his brother did defeat Wakataka Kage. Or, uh, his brother Wakataka Kage did defeat Tamawashi. You know, they're brothers. They're probably going to share advice with each other. Like, oh, what did you do? Oh, you know, put the right hand up and uh, twisted him around. You know, use the pivot. It's like, yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, I got it. And that's, you know, spark notes, cliff notes. Probably what they talked about here. Tamawashi versus Wakamoto Haru. Again, I did not think Tamawashi had a ghost in hell of losing this match, basically. But we're going to see that, uh, you know, on the rest of the Banzuke, Hokuto Fuji lost, Nishiki Fuji lost. So win or lose, he's going to still be first place. But of course, when you lose, you're going to get closer to that pack. The pressure is on his back. He's going for the Yusho here. Can Wakamoto Haru stop him? Wakamoto Haru immediately gets a grip of the belt like Hokuto Fuji did, gripping the Sagari. And that's that kind of gives him the push that he needs. Tamawashi got the hands to the face. And I don't really know why, but he pulls back and tries to go for a slap down. I don't understand why Tamawashi pulls back there. Again, it's probably what I was talking about earlier, where when you feel them resist the push, you want to let them fall. And he just kind of let Waka, Wakamoto Haru fall right into his chest. Hmm. Waka bro started to push. I think that's true, too. I think that's true. Yeah, you're right. That's why we have to watch this at full speed so many times. You're going to see right here, this left foot never really touches the ground for Tamawashi. And this, this step forward was an overextension by Tamawashi. Because he stands himself up too much and now his left arm is too compact, so he's not getting as much pressure on that neck. And because Wakamoto Haru has such a fantastic defensive stance, like those legs are in such a powerful position right here. Shoulder, hips, all square against Tamawashi. Tamawashi overextends his attack right here, and Wakamoto Haru goes on the push. You're absolutely right, Esteban. And there, Wakamoto Haru pushes right through Tamawashi. Like even at full speed, it's so quick. I didn't really notice it even while I was casting it live. It's that one misstep from Tamawashi on the offense just got a little too close. Instead of trying to use those hands to keep Wakamoto Haru at bay. Wakamoto Haru stays close because of that grip on the Sagari, 
And when he feels that overextension, when he feels Tamawashi stand up too straight, he goes for the attack right there. Really well done from Wakamoto Haru. And it really is just in that one moment. That one moment turns the tables because if, you know, if Tamawashi stays in this position and just tries to keep hands up high to the face at an arm's length, then Wakamoto Haru stays stood up like this. He's never able to, you know, dig those hips down so he can bend the knees underneath and then load up this spring that's going to boom shoot out as soon as he sees the opportunity. On this push forward, you can see the entire time he's getting those legs back. He, oh, those, those legs, they're so good. They're so strong. Completely resisting the push too, like going full crescent moon on his back right there. Going to give himself scoliosis or something. Resisting that entire upper body push from Tamawashi. And that's kind of the problem there. Tamawashi was only pushing with the arms. And not really utilizing this lower body as well as he could have been, I don't think. Because we can see, you know, a bend in the knees, that's standard, keeping your hips lower and square. But once he stands up and gets the arm to the neck, that's when he loses a lot of the pressure because he's going to straighten out his legs, kind of like what Abi does and what uh, Daesho do. They stand up straight, and that allows Wakamoto Haru to resist it. Like right here, you know, that leg is straight. This leg is straight, and this leg, like I said earlier, he overextended the step, and that's when Wakamoto Haru feels like, you know, again, Wakamoto Haru, this is the most we've seen someone resist the Tachi Eye from Tamawashi. This is the most resistant, because even Sarano Umi popped all the way back to the edge. Mitake Umi won the Tachi Eye, so I guess you could say this is the second time this tournament that someone really resisted Tamawashi's push. And even uh, against Hokuto Fuji, Tamawashi played it more defensively. But, like, not even the Yokozuna was able to withstand the push this strong. And once Tamawashi gets too close, again, losing a lot of power up in this left shoulder and elbow to the face because he stands up. He's curving his back up in a way that you usually don't want to because now that allows Wakamoto Haru to get that step forward and push because he's got the double hands inside to the chest and that's all of the force you need to just go on the offense right there. Just that one blink of an eye, that one moment. You know, Wakamoto Haru is a lot better than I give him credit for. <laughs> and I think I need to be, stop being so hard on him. I don't think he expected such a fast transition. That's probably true, but uh, you know, I, I don't know what to follow up with that. He probably didn't expect that. Yeah, Wakamoto Haru is, you know, he trains with his brother. He's not as good as his brother, not yet, but you know, he's pretty damn good. He has to be able to recognize at that moment's notice. Like, that's the instinct. That's something that you can't teach, is knowing the exact moment when to strike, when to attack, when to counterattack. You know, that's that's the thing that you can't teach. That's just knowing instinctively now. Like, I gotta go now. I gotta push now. That's just really good sumo sense from Wakamoto Haru. And even though Tamawashi, again, had a really nice push, he pushed too far forward and overextended himself. And that allowed him to give up the inside like he does right here. And then Tamawashi just loses. So now the race is a bit closer. After this day, you know, Tamawashi is still ahead by one. He's 10-2. Uh, and two. Tobizaru, Takeyasu, Hokuto Fuji, and Nishiki Fuji were on his heels all at nine wins. And Nishiki Fuji was the man he would be fighting next on day 13. Yeah, I think Wakamoto Haru will probably reach Sanyaku. Especially if we have a revolving door of Sanyaku, guys. Let's see. 
Chinojo, Takayasu, Kiriba. Uh, Takanosho. Here we go. Tamawashi Nishiki Fuji. So coming into this match, oh my goodness, the race is so close. Nishiki Fuji can tie it up, can bring Tamawashi down. This could be an exciting finish. Do I believe he could reach it this year? Uh, well, to take a bit of a tangent, uh, Wakamoto Haru 10 and 5 from Maigashita 6. That's definitely good enough to put him at like Maigashita 1, if anything else. And if we want to uh, do a Bansuke query, rank M6, 10 and 5, we can see that a lot of the times they will reach, well, very rarely Sekiwake, but a lot of the times they'll reach Komusubi or Maigashira 1, which at that point you're just a step away. Because out of. Uh, out of 62 results, only one, two, three, four of them across the past like 70 years, they've gone to Maigashira 3. So very likely he lands at Maigashira 1, and then all he needs is like a 9 and 6, which a lot easier said than done. But yeah, I think uh, Wakamoto Haru could make it for uh, the new year. What tool am I using? I am using the... Uh, sumo database and i'll link it in both chats here but uh you can query uh you can put in you know group by basho or rikshi you can do it by their first tournament that kind of thing it's a uh, pretty advanced it's a pretty good tool and uh, i highly recommend it as long as it uh, doesn't go down because it does that pretty often let me put it in this chat as well can I do analysis on up-and-coming superstars? It's funny you ask that because I do that in uh, some of my other videos. That is going to be a future video I do where I cover a lot of the guys in the lower divisions. Uh, it's more or less like a quick roundup on their records and their ranks and how high we expect them to go. But if there is enough demand for it, I could pick and choose like a couple of those younger guys and like do breakdowns of their matches as well. But uh, yeah, that is something that I do, and I will be looking forward to doing, yeah. Yeah, not just in Judeo either, although I do want to talk about Tochi Musashi. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to uh, Tamawashi Nishiki Fuji. Getting into this match full speed, Nishiki Fuji going right into the defensive tachi eye of Tamawashi who takes a step back and gets the slap down with the big arm behind the head. Kawazoe makes it to Judeo lickety split and might be fun. Oh yeah, no, I'm looking forward to Kawazoe. Speaking of Kawazoe, two of his matches were in my top 10 of the lower divisions video. So if you guys haven't seen it already, I do have other YouTube videos Featuring the lower division guys, I uh, did a top 10 of the lower divisions because there were so many amazing matches from those lower divisions that I couldn't help myself. All right, that's the last tangent before Tamawashi Nishiki Fuji. We got the split screen. We got the up. Yeah, just simple defensive Tachi Ai from Tamawashi. Wouldn't really call it a Henka, but it's not a straight up charge forward. Like I said, it's a, the Tamawashi taking that small step forward, just eating up. Nishiki Fuji here because he gets the big right hand to the side and this push is gonna you know force Nishiki Fuji down to the side and that is gonna give him the momentum he needs swings this hip backwards he's gonna swing this foot backwards as well hand to the back of the head Nishiki Fuji doesn't really stand a chance here and he just got eaten up by Tamawashi Tamawashi taking the win. Yeah, Tamawashi, Nishiki Fuji, over in the blink of an eye. Not too much to say about it either, which is uh why we like sumo. Very quick, easy, bite-sized matches. <laughs> and now, you know, the race is still open in Tamawashi's favor. The next match is against Tobi Zaru, which I was really hoping for Tobi Zaru here. There, it is no secret that I am a Tobizaru fan. Tobizaru is 
my favorite that I want Toby Zadu to win. And that I really would have liked to see Toby Zadu win here and possibly compete for the U show. But, uh, you know, it was not meant to be. I mean, Sumo does have stars in the sense that sumo wrestlers are celebrities. You know, in the sense that, you know, basketball players or football players are also celebrities. You know, they're celebrities among their own circles. And they even get on, you know, variety TV shows every once in a while. But uh, they are fundamentally different as a sport because it is also a religion. But you're not wrong, Aquadal. Uh I think Asanayama was supposed to be that golden boy superstar. But because of what he did, there they might need to like look for another one, which again, there's a lot of young guys on the up and up. Colton Owaka has sumo blood in his veins. I'm really looking forward to him succeeding. Atami Fuji is young and in charge. He's consistent. Hokuseho is big. Like, there's a lot of young, marketable guys. Even Toby Zadu. I mean, except they told Toby Zadu to stop being so goofy, you know? <sighs> but anyway, into this match. Toby Zadu Tamawashi at full speed here. Tamawashi, offensive Tachi Eye, and well, Toby Zadu just bopped right onto his butt, didn't stand a chance. <laughs> and uh, that's kind of the theme for these last few matches for Tamawashi is quick, easy wins. Right here, Tamawashi, he doesn't go backwards, he doesn't stand up straight, he actually takes a, a bigger first step at the Tachi Eye, you know, usually you, you, you baby step, but he took a bit of a bigger first step here. And... You know, Toby Zadu a little bit off. Like, that knee is askew. This leg is pointing way too far outside. His shoulders are turned this way. This is a bad Tachi eye. Like, that is how you don't take a Tachi eye. He's, like, trying to do some weird interpretive dance move right here off the Tachi eye. And because of that, Tamawashi just, you know, controls it with double inside. And then he's going to push and because Toby Zaru doesn't have a real base underneath him, he's just going to get shoved onto his ass. And he does, you know, try to recover. He fixes his feet, but at this point, it's a little too late. Just blasted backwards with strong hands to the throat. There's like no hope for Toby Zaru there. Tamawashi getting the perfect Tachi Eye. Hands straight up to the clavicle. Just like, what can Toby Zaru do about that? There really isn't much to say about that, too, except Toby Zaru. Bad initial stance. Like, that, that's just not a stance. This is saying, I got beat hard at the Tachi Eye. He, he, he's wearing a t-shirt right now like, I got beat at the Tachi Eye. <laughs> His back is curled like a shrimp. This leg that was supposed to get forward momentum, like, when you get that big step forward, you don't want the knee to be, like, behind your foot. You want the knee to be in front of your foot so you can drive forward. This knee is behind the foot, so now he's going backwards. And that's really all there is to say about this. Tamawashi, big charge forward. Really Toby bad Zadu Tachi eye from Toby Zadu. And Tamawashi, the veteran, and Tamawashi smart, looks like the knows exactly what he's doing. Right now at 12 and 2. That is the power of Thomas Owashi. <laughs> <laughs> Stumbled getting back up into the ring. So now at this point, day 15, we're talking, all right, Takeyasu, he has the power to force a playoff here. Can Takeyasu force a playoff, or will it be the Tamawashi Yusho no contest? Can Takeyasu, the father of two, finally do it? Destiny in his hands. Or will it be the Tamawashi victory? Spoiler alert, it's not even close. Tamawashi can get his second Yusho. 
Tamawashi, right hand under the armpit. Gets Takayasu off balance, hand to the neck. Pushes forward for the win. So let's watch that full speed again. It looks like Takayasu just doesn't have good enough footing here as, Ta as Tamawashi. Like, he slips back on that left foot, but he immediately recovers, whereas Takayasu, he just looked like a fish out of water the entire match. Like, trying to get something on that back right foot, but then stumbling forward, giving Tamawashi the way into the match. And we'll break it down here. Takayasu, he usually tries to go for these, uh, you know, forearm inside so he can deflect the attack but you can see he's turning this way to try to pop tamawashi up this way but tamawashi always leads with this right foot so he's got stance over here right hand outside so they're both trying to deflect each other basically towards the gyoji and because of that takiyasu with the inside doesn't really have much leverage except against the head here which I mean, Tamawashi, he has the hand on the shoulder, on the rib cage. He's just going to push that way. And Takiyasu, again, bad stance on the Tachi Eye. This foot is so far back. It's not underneath him at all. If Tamawashi just took a step back here, Takiyasu just goes, wow. Like, all that weight is so far forward. And he nearly completely misses on this Tachi Eye. And that's what gets him like in this already bad position. He has to hop backwards on this back foot. Again, already on the back foot. Trying to drive this leg forward. But you see, he's only got the tippy toes down. He doesn't have his heel dug into the dirt. Takayasu only has his toes down here. And sure, he's probably going to get it down in the next frame. But that's, you know, you don't want to lead with your toes, especially on the defense. You want to dig that heel in like we saw in an earlier match against who I don't remember, but uh, Tamawashi, right hand inside underneath that armpit, so at any point he could just pull it up and parry this attack that Takayasu is trying to plant to the chest here, and again, Takayasu is in a very bad position, feet like that way, hips this way, shoulders not square with his opponent either, so he is way off balance, whereas Tamawashi... No, it doesn't take a rocket scientist. Square, 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 everything facing his opponent right here. So he is in perfect position. Actually does have to hop backwards. And instead of opting to push that arm up, he actually slaps it down. And Takiyasu now, like I said, with that really bad position, the feet that was back here, he's stumbling forward now because he's forced to go this way. So now he needs to take a big risky step forward, which, you know, the more airtime your foot has, the less time you are with stability. And then uh, I'll get to your off topic question in just a second. So to follow this up, Tamawashi kind of misses the slap down there. You saw him swing at air, but then he recovers and goes straight for the inside. It was just a quick moment, but he goes straight for the inside here as now he's going like chest into the shoulder of Takayasu, pushing forward, arm inside, giving him the leverage he needs. Takayasu, his arm in a very strange position here, trying to use that forearm to probably go for the stomach, but now Tamawashi has all the momentum going forward. You can see these big feet are going to start choo-chooing forward for this huge push, and... Takayasu, again, he does put up defense. He tries to deflect this attack off to the side, but his feet are in such horrible position. His stance is so wide. He's like, he's just going to get blown over by the wind. His feet are so wide. You can't do anything with this stance. And again, he because of how wide and how unruly his stance was, his foot has to jump all the way from over here to over here. And again, the more airtime your foot has, the less stability you have, the less strength you're going to have in that lower body. And now Tamawashi easily on a follow up. It happens again. He lifts up this foot because he just doesn't have any stability. He has to keep hopping back on these feet over and over again. And Tamawashi just keeps landing every single attack to the chest, hand to the chest. There's just no room for Takayasu to do anything in this match. And if anything, 
I would say Tamawashi wins right here. Because he throws Takayasu off balance and never lets him regain that balance. Relentless in his attack, Tamawashi wins it straight off the Tachi Eye. Takayasu never had good, solid footing, never had any kind of inkling of an attack. Tamawashi just completely dominant in this final match. And that is how he wins his second Yusho. These last three wins were like, all right, you know what? I'm just going to end it quick. I'm just going to win. I'm just going to win and win and win. And a majority of his matches were just really quick wins, just over and over and over again. Second Yusho for Tamawashi. Pretty exciting stuff. Like, no, I don't think anyone expected this old man to get his second Yusho, his... You know, it's been a long time since his first one. Uh, I think that was January of 2019. So three and a half, almost four years since his first U show, he wins his second. And, uh, you know, people are saying, oh, my goodness, he could make a push for Ozeki. I don't think it's going to happen. But at, uh, you know, 13 and two, he has to be at least Sekiwake. They're, they're not going to snub him. I know they snubbed Daisho. But they're not going to snub Tamawashi here. He's going to be Komusubi or Sekiwake. It's going to be... You know, he does have a good position to go to... If he uh, can possibly make a push for Ozeki at the age of 38. He's going to be turning 38 in November. And uh, yeah, that's... That's it for Tamawashi. 13-2. and two. Most of his wins were complete dominance. His losses... Well, again, earlier on... Hoshoryu Shodai, he almost lost those, but won. So even with those, it would have been 11 and 4. And, you know, that would have been almost worthy for, I mean, it would have been Jun Yusho anyway, depending on uh, other matchups. But, uh, you know, if he loses even against Hoshoryu or loses against uh, Shodai, like I said, it was a bit coin flippy, then, uh, you know, slightly different tournament, but still same result. But yeah, Tamawashi, I. Did not expect this from him. Did not expect him to turn up the way he did. And congratulations to him. How's Takayasu rode back to Ozeki going with 11 on this tourney? Uh, well, he's in the same boat as Tamawashi here. They both got, well, Takayasu, Tamawashi, and uh, Wakataka Kage, I guess you could all say, are on an Ozeki push starting this tournament. If uh, Takayasu were to get another double digits, that would probably put him at Sekiwake because he's 11 and 4 from Maegashira 4. Probably Maegashira 1, maybe Komusubi. Tamawashi, 100% Komusubi, maybe Sekiwake. And then Wakataka Kage, 11 wins. Also, Sekiwake already, so he doesn't need to worry. He just needs, you know, 22 more wins. All right. Heard that 95 to 98% of a sumo match is decided at the Tachi Eye. Yes, you're not wrong. Like, there are some matches where they go a bit longer and it doesn't really matter who won the Tachi Eye, but like 90% of the time it's won at the Tachi Eye. And then the off topic. Did you know that there was a new Berserk anime named Berserk Oganji Daihen Memorial Edition? I did not know that. That's pretty dope. I need to get back into Berserk. I stopped right before they uh, got on the boat. <laughs> look at how well some of the veterans are doing and showing experience matters yeah and like i said it's uh in that wakamoto hano match that's just sumo sense that is pure instinct taking over and getting you that win there and of course uh wakamoto hado is like what 10 years younger <laughs> let me let me actually see that Wakamoto Haru is 28, so yeah, actually just nine years younger. Alrighty. So that is going to end it for the uh, the YouTube side, because I'm going to be showing some of Koto Shogiku's uh, Danpatsu Shiki, uh, his retirement ceremony on the Twitch side, and if I showed it on the YouTube side, then I, I would be afraid at... Uh, NHK or the Sumo Association trying to take me down, which would suck. But, uh, you know, we are going to watch that on the Twitch side. 
because YouTube, they're a little bit more, uh, you know, trigger happy when it comes to the demonetization and the bots and all that. Uh, I do want to thank you on the YouTube side for watching. Thank you for watching this breakdown. I really hope you enjoyed it. Look forward to next week where we could cover anyone if you want. We could cover uh, Takiyasu or Wakataka Kage. They were both Jun Yusho winners. Or maybe even we can cover uh, Tochi Musashi, the Judo Yusho winner. Because, you know, we do want to see those up and comers. Uh, or... Uh, I don't know. We can do something for next week at the very least. Uh, I will not be streaming on the YouTube on Sunday, but on Monday, I will be doing uh, Mahjong Monday, probably both on YouTube and uh, Twitch because I need more watch hours on YouTube. So thank you, everybody, for joining us on the YouTube side. Uh, all of you watching this video, and if you missed any part of it, you can go back and watch the VOD. Uh, all these watch hours are going to help me get monetization. So I really hope that we can get monetization before the next tournament and that YouTube doesn't say, oh, you're not changing it enough because, I mean, I just did John Madden style drawing all over the screen. I really hope we did uh, change it enough that uh, they won't be too mad at me, you know. <laughs> so thank you for watching on the YouTube side. We will catch you cats later and on Twitch. If you wanted to join on Twitch, the link is in the description down below. We are going to be watching some of Koto Shogiku's retirement ceremony. Thank you again for watching. Have a nice day.